everyone. This is my year in review. I'm gonna just make it while I'm in the holiday season. Uh, you guys would remember probably a couple of videos ago by now I was dressed just like this. I did my Christmas thing and I figured, oh, since I'm dressed up, I'll do my year in review along with the holiday season because I don't stop celebrating until after January 1st. Um, I just love being in front of the Christmas tree and just being around the Christmas tree. It just, I think it's such a beautiful tree. I just, uh, I just love being over here. So sorry, sorry, sorry. It's better, better background than um, sitting in my bedroom, I guess. Um, so it is 2017 and it is close to the end of the year. Close enough anyway, a couple weeks away. And man, this year has been full of changes and surprises and just what the fuck moments. Um, as you guys who have followed me for a long time know, you, you'll know everything I've been through. Other ones, other people that are new here might not, so I'll just kind of briefly, Raven briefly, go through what's happened. My husband of the last five and a half years and I split up. Uh, Things hadn't been going too well for us. We we were living a lie for quite a while. Neither of us were happy. And we kind of just mutually made the decision that we needed to go our separate ways. Just kind of, we both felt it at the same time. Usually one of us would feel like splitting up and the other one wouldn't. And so the first one would bring the other one back and vice versa. But this time we both felt it. And so there was nobody to kind of um, put a hold on it and say, well, wait a minute. We can't lose each other, we love each other. And so we made the decision. He told me, you've always wanted to go home, you should go home, which is, you know, from New Zealand to America, of course. And um, I said, well, you know, and I know it's probably wrong for me to say, say it like that, but to go home, I, I probably need a boyfriend. Like, I wouldn't just go home just to kind of live on the streets by myself. I'd, I'd only go home to, I guess be in a new relationship and start a new life with somebody else and the reason for that is because I I don't have any family or like friends that could help me or take me and I've got nowhere to go I've got no one to turn to my mom's in in a home somewhere my sister and brother don't talk to me I I have nothing here um so it's kind of stupid to like come here empty-handed and just rely on like handouts you know whereas if I had an established relationship well it would make sense for me to kind of come back home um, I'm not very self-sufficient I'm not gonna lie uh, I haven't worked in over 10 years I gave up on trying to look respectable for work in New Zealand because nobody would hire me once they found out that I was American yes that is the reason because I've been told many times I've been told by some of the employers as well and other employees they don't like Americans, they didn't want to hire Americans. And it's not like I had any great major skills where they would have picked me over a local. So I got turned down for every job I applied for and I just gave up, went crazy with the tattoos, thinking I'm never gonna get out of here, I'm never gonna get a job, what does it matter? But now I've kind of limited myself to where I, there's not as many places that would probably take me. Um, I met Josh and Josh was fine with me not being able to work or not working. There's stuff from home I can do. There's YouTube. You know, it's not like a job, but it, it is kind of like my job. Um, it's income that I get for little things here and there, you know, maybe for, for now, Christmas for him. Otherwise, it's what I use to take care of myself. You know, I, I, I buy my own necessities with it if I have the money and stuff instead of just kind of like, Josh, Josh, you know. Um, but I, yeah, I... I met this guy. I met this guy on my Facebook. It was a new Facebook that I had made because I'd reached a 5,000 friend limit. I had like three or four Facebooks I was making because I kept hitting the limit within a few days and I didn't want to leave anybody out. So, and I didn't want to have my whole profile public either. So I just started opening new profiles. And um, he had commented on some of my pictures. He would just say, you know, it's a beautiful picture keep up the good work and like real positive kind of but not skeevy comments and i was drawn to him i don't know why i was but i was i was drawn to him his picture was him on the couch with the biggest smile on his face and i just felt like comforted when i looked at him and i looked at that picture 
And I got my balls up one day and I wrote him and said that I really liked seeing his smile light up my feet. And he just said something like, oh, thanks. But he didn't really say anything else. And I felt like a total fool and I didn't write again. And later on, I made a video saying like, God, just because I look a certain way in my pictures online doesn't mean I'm a whore. Just because I post the picture, stop treating me like a slut. Because, you know, I like to take sexy, risque photos. It just, it's, it's like artistic to me and it makes me feel good about myself. But it's not who I am as a person. And people need to understand that what you might see online is not how a person necessarily is in real life. And he wrote to me and he said, do you really get that many like perverts that you have to make a video like that? And I said, yeah, I, I get it all the time. And he started like being a little bit more active that day on my profile and he watched my video and, and oh, he left another comment and he said, I love the way that you said bye to everybody and 5.5 minutes later you're still talking and I said yeah I tend to do that I say bye and then I talk and talk and and uh, he said oh I didn't know that and I said well you haven't seen my YouTube and he's like no I'd love to see your videos and so I linked him and I said if you want to get to know me here are a couple of videos and I linked him to two of my longest ones the story of my life and why I moved to New Zealand and uh, I'm pretty sure that's the second one and I didn't expect him to watch it watch them because they're an hour long but he did right then and there he watched them and he talked to me about them like live and I was like this guy's pretty nice like he's interested in my life like what the hell and I wasn't looking to like anybody even though I knew I needed a, a relationship in order to move I wasn't actively looking for a relationship so that I could move because that would mean I was setting out just to use somebody and that's not what I was trying to do so let me clear that up right away and um there was just something about him and you know I get guys hitting on me daily pretty much not as much anymore now that I'm with him but before him I'd get guys hitting on me daily Logan was non-existent on my social media he didn't like he didn't like being a part of it he didn't understand it and he kind of left me to fend for myself against horn dogs trolls bullies everything by myself he just never he was never there for me not unless i would be like please or if there's something really extreme he's like you know what i'm gonna speak out about this but it was hard for him to do he didn't like it it was just it was just hard anyway but um i don't know there was just something about him and we talked and we got along really good and i said you know would you mind maybe voice calling or video calling sometime and I, I never do that I never ask to video or voice call with anybody I don't like doing it I don't like it when people call me I hate it they'll instantly get you told off and blocked and he was like yeah sure and then we ended up talking to each other and his voice was so deep and he had such a heavy accent I was like whoa you know and we joke and say he sounded like a big black man I'm not racist it just you know he just looked like this little skinny little like white boy and you hear him talking it's like woo, woo, and I was like whoa you know not that he sounded stupid or illiterate and that's why he sounded black that my words have been turned around against me it's not that at all it was just he wrote so much like me in my head I I read his writing as myself like in my own voice I guess which might be a bit conceited of me but I just I read it very no accent, not really a deep voice kind of thing. And then you hear him speak and he, he speaks differently. He's a Southern boy and, you know, and all that. And then I saw him on camera and I was like, because oh, he had said, yeah, my hair's long and his picture didn't look long. I love long hair and his hair is like long. And he's like, and I've got icy blue eyes. He actually doesn't have blue eyes. He's got gray eyes, which I've never met anybody with gray eyes. We thought his eyes were blue, but I, I look into his eyes as often as I can, and they are definitely gray. They are not blue. Um, but hey, <laughs> still sexy. And he's thin. Like, he didn't look so thin on camera in his pictures. He kind of looked like a big guy. But when I met him in person, he's like a stick. He's really, really skinny, which I also love. Like, I love scrawny guys. And then it turned out he was tall as well. Like, he's a... Uh, six one and a half and I'm you know he's almost six two and I'm five two and it was like uh, you know and I love that too I love tall guys so he he checked out the list of everything that I love in a guy 
and he's intelligent and he's caring and he's kind. And that first day, he told me that he loved me. He said that he had actually felt like he loved me before he ever spoke to me. Like he had gotten to know me through my posts and my pictures and the way I presented myself in my videos. And he just felt like this love for me. And that's not the first time I've been told that. I've been told that by other guys. So um, I don't know how, but I'm thankful that he felt that way. And um, he asked me to be his girlfriend that day. So we started dating. And by our next conversation the next day, he asked me to marry him. And I wasn't sure if he really felt that way because I move fast, but that was fast even for me. Like usually guys don't move as fast as I do, but he meant it and he never wavered from it, never. And uh, you know, still hasn't. So we made plans for me to move move in with him, move out. I don't even know how that came about, but pretty much um, like a week or two later, we started thinking Logan was like, oh, I don't want to be in this house anymore. I want to move out. You need to make plans on where you're going to go, what you're going to do. Cause I just, I'm just aggravated being in here. I hate this house so much. Cause he hated the house. He hated everything. And so I moved in with my ex and was trying to raise money for my ticket to come over here took a lot of hard work. I sold a lot of stuff. I threw away a lot of stuff. I used YouTube money and donations from people and a huge donation from one of my closest friends and ended up getting my ticket. And I came here and Logan and I got a divorce like uh, in September, I believe. September or October. I don't remember. I'd have to look. But um, we got our divorce and it was it was really weird because right after we split and we moved house, there was a bit of a period of adjustment for us because we hadn't been apart like that, especially not willingly. And after we were away from each other, we started thinking like, are we making the right choice? Like, you know, you, you get used to a certain way of life and you get used to a person and you want to cling on to the remnants of what you had. It's really hard to let go and it's really hard to start a new chapter in your life. It's really, really scary. And so, you know, I'd wonder and he'd wonder and he started to really miss me. And he's like, I don't want to do this. I feel really bad. I, I really don't want this. I thought I wanted it, but I don't. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm involved now. You know, I, I can't just, I, I can't just shut it off and then, you know, not go. I mean, I wouldn't do that to Josh anyway. And you know, he's like, no, no, I'm not asking you to. And I was like, well, you know, I mean, I'm scared too. Cause I was really scared. What if I came here and Josh wasn't who he said he was? What if he treated me bad, put me out on the streets? Who knew, who knows what I was walking into, especially with my history of ending up with really bad guys. I put all my faith and trust in a guy I had just met online and hoping that he was who he said he was. And, um, I wanted to give up many times, many, many times. A, a huge part of my brain was saying, don't go, don't go. You know how it is here. You might hate New Zealand, but you know everything here. You know how it is. You you have people here who could help you. You're in the system. You could get help. You could probably get housing if you applied for it. Who knows? Who knows what I could have done? Could have done lots of stuff, maybe. Um, don't go, even though America's your home, you will have nobody if he fucks you over. And I just, I was like, look, you've got to take risks in your life. You have to. This is my one shot. I'm not going to fuck it up. What if he is true? And I just kind of banked on that. I came over here and it's been better than I could have ever thought. Um, as you guys who have followed me know, like there's been a huge change in my demeanor since I've been here. Um, I finally have like the loving and caring relationship that I've always wanted. I know what I had with Logan, a lot of stuff's kind of cleared up in my head since the situation's been over with and I can see a lot of stuff that I wasn't able to see before. Like I made a lot of excuses for him in the way that he was, you know, I said, oh, he's young. He's never been in a relationship before. Um, oh, because he doesn't call me names or hit me. He's the best relationship I've ever had. And while that bit was true, it's still, that's not what a good relationship is. There's more to it than that. And he was really neglectful. Like when I got my surgery and I lost weight, he didn't really care. 
Like I said, he left me to take the fall for our relationship for the entire time we were together, which was really hard on me. Like he thinks he's stressed out hearing about it a little bit. He wasn't even online. I'm the one that had to deal with it and I wasn't the only one in the relationship. He could have left any time and it, since he wanted to be with me as much as I wanted to be with him, he should have stood by my side and defended our relationship instead of leaving me, throwing me to the wolves myself, you know, which he did. And um, he didn't really tell me I was pretty. Now, unless I brought it up to him and I was like, look, you're being neglectful. You don't even care what I look like. You don't care what I do. You don't care what I weigh. What the fuck? And then he started saying, well, you look really pretty today, but I knew I had, I had had to bring it up to him. And then he didn't really want to watch anything with me. Like we had nothing in common. We didn't laugh. We couldn't talk. He never talked. He didn't contribute anything. And I mean, there was good to the relationship too, but there was a lot of bad that I, I lied to myself about and I lied to other people about and I made it seem like we had this perfect relationship and we were destined to be together and we were justified and I spent so many years of my life defending that relationship. I was in that mindset still for a while after I got here, like I had a right to be with him. We had a right to be together. We loved each other. But seeing the way that Josh treats me it's like night and day and it's like a slap in the face. I know everybody's different and I really am not trying to knock Logan. I know it sounds like it, I'm not. It's just not the kind of person he was and he needs a girl that doesn't need what I need is what it is, what it boils down to. Not that he's a bad person, he's just not what I personally needed. Um, we all need different things in a relationship. I like to feel like I'm loved and special and cared about. I don't want to be the only one to reach out and hold you. I want you to reach out and hold me too. I want you to look at me and tell me that you love me or make me feel like I'm pretty sometimes or like you know why you're with me. If I say why do you love me, I want you to be able to come up with at least more than just she buys me stuff. You know what I mean? I, I want to feel like your life would be worse off without me. And the little things like he was such a slob. I copped so much flack for the house being so dirty all the time. And I would clean and he'd come home from work and he'd throw his trash and his clothes and his dishes and everything all over the floor. Like he would undo all of my hard work in just a couple of minutes. And I'd be like, you are such a slob. Like this really bothers me. It's starting to really stress me out. If you care about me at all, why can't you care what this is doing to me? And he, he didn't care. Christmas thing. He didn't care that Christmas was important to me. You know, he didn't care about things like that. And Josh, I, I'm the kind of person where the bed has got to be perfect or I cannot sleep. If I feel a wrinkle under my feet, on top of my feet, I cannot sleep. And that was a source of a lot of fights with Logan as well because I'd be like, can you help me make the bed or hold on, I need to make the bed. And he'd roll his eyes and grumble. He wouldn't want to do it. Josh is like, okay, let's make the bed. Or you just lay there, sweetheart. I'll make the bed for you. And he'll make it around me. He will he doesn't grumble at all because he knows it's important to me. He did this for me because he knows it's important to me. He tells me every day, oh, I missed you so much. I'm so glad you're here. I can't believe you're here. You look so beautiful today. Even if I'm a mess with my hair jutting out and no makeup on and sweaty, greasy and stinky or whatever he still thinks that i'm beautiful and i feel like he means it he looks me right in the face and he hugs me like i'm the most important thing in the world to him and you know my videos he knows how important youtube is in this part of my life this is a part of my life and it has been i've got a lot of hate but i've also got a lot of people that follow me and that support me and he knows and understands that and I could be like, do you want to make a video with me? And he'll sit here with me and he'll make it. He won't bitch if we repeat ourselves. I'm probably repeating this because I know I've said this before in another video. But he he doesn't bitch and complain about that. He, he just does. And like there's been times we've been ready to go out to dinner or something. He's like, come on, sweetheart, we need to go. Come on, babe, let's go. And I'm like, can we take a couple pictures first? And Logan would just be like... And I'm like, smile or... You know what, I can't use any of these pictures. You look so miserable, people are gonna jump all over that. And he couldn't bring himself to even look like he was happy to be with me half the time. Josh is there, you know, a big old smile on his face. You can't even tell he was kind of like, we need to hurry up. He just does it for me. Like, he does it. He does so much for me. Um, Does dishes. I'm like, 
trying to clean and do dishes. It's hard because of my rib and my chest. And he's there doing dishes and he just lay down and he'll write me, he'll say, just sleep, sleep, sleep. And I'm like, I don't wanna sleep all day. I don't have anything to do. I've cleaned the house. The house is clean. We bought a vacuum. I've got my clothes over there on the floor, but like the floor is clean. Dishes are done, counters clean, floors swept and mopped. I mean, I, I've picked everything up. It's not really a hell of a lot for me to do here. I just, I sit online or I clean the house. I cook dinner when it's close to time for him to get off. Um, but he just wants me to rest and I feel like a lazy fuck sleeping or being in bed all day while he's out working. And he doesn't see it that way. He just wants me to take care of myself and rest. Like, he cares about my health, he cares about me, comes home, wraps his arms around me, and, you know, if I wanna watch a movie with him, he'll watch a movie with me. He never says he doesn't like it. A lot of the times he loves it. We're so similar in the stuff that we like, even the music. It's like, there's no grumbling or anger, and he, tells me, you know, if we're arguing about something, usually it's me just being a petty bitch because I've been real moody. He'll hug me and say, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, sweetheart. I don't want to fight with you. I love you. And he doesn't want to fight ever. And, you know, it feels so good to be with somebody like that. Like, I took this one chance and let my marriage go with someone that I thought I loved more than anything in the world, but I wasn't happy. And I got tired of pretending I was happy and pretending that everything was fine and always copying the flack for being a pedophile because I fell in love with someone that I thought loved me the same. And I threw all of that away hoping one last chance to be happy. And I came here and I'm treated better than I've ever been treated before. And it's just like, it was so hard to do, it really was. And even when I first got here and I was like, all, oh, with Josh, thinking about my old life and that I would, I will never see Logan again. I will never be in New Zealand again. It, it's a huge change. I mean, I'm 41 years old. It's not like I'm a young teenager or in my 20s where I can just hop and bop around and it's like not really a big deal. It's a huge deal. I was 10 years in that country and almost six years in that life and all of that's gone now. And um, I have a much better life now, but the adjustment in my mind has been a little bit hard. So um, the next thing is uh, Dorian. I haven't really addressed this in videos. I, I actually have, but they're on my Patreon. That's where I went full unleashed, lots of details. I'm not gonna do that here because those people paid for you know, stuff like that for a reason. But uh, I'm just gonna say that I've disowned him 100%. He is no son of mine. If you have followed me again, you will know all the shit that we've been through with me trying to, you know, have him secure in his future. All I wanted was for him to work or go to school or do something for himself because whether I moved or I died, I knew that I wouldn't always be around and he would have nobody to turn to. I just wanted him set up for his future and he never wanted to do anything for himself nothing and he would you know quickly move out turn his back on me say that he had other family and just talk so much shit about me to people like he was abused and he hated being around me but when it was just me and him he was completely fine he was like my best friend we'd laugh and we'd have a great time together we were really close but god forbid he let anybody know that and what he's done this time is he went to Lolcow and Kiwi Farms, or, you know, he went to one of the two and completely bashed me. Him and his little girlfriend um, went there and slammed the fuck out of me. He lied. He answered, they, they like fed him questions, things they wanted to know about me. He changed his story on everything. Like now he's trying to say that he didn't want me with Logan and he only told me about Logan once. That's a lie. That's a flat out lie. And he said it himself. It wasn't even like that. He wanted us together and he would come home and tell me about him every fucking day until I gave in and I said, fine, who is this guy? I'm tired of hearing about him, about your little friend. I'm not interested. But now, oh no, I'm stupid for moving to America to be with somebody. He has no interest in, in even being friendly with Josh because Josh is weird. No, he wasn't. Josh said, hi, Dorian. How are you? And they had a video chatted before. And I said, Dorian, that's rude not to reply. I raised you better than that. And Dorian didn't care. Um, 
he said that I emotionally and physically abused him his whole life. He's never seen me get beat by any exes or go through anything. We were never starving in the States. Like he tore apart pretty much every single thing I've ever said, every part of my life. He's tried to say I've lied about and all I do is lie, 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 lie because he's getting attention from them. They're sitting there and they're feeding into it and they're like, oh, Dorian, she didn't deserve you. You're such a good kid. You deserve so much better. You don't need her, blah, 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 blah. Like he's the greatest kid in the world and he is soaking it up like a dry sponge. All he's ever wanted is attention. All he's ever done is lie for attention. Like I've caught him lying to people. I bought him a Rammstein shirt one year from eBay and he was online telling people that he got it at the concert when he went uh, to Berlin. He's never been to Berlin. He said on the way from America to New Zealand, we stopped off in the UK and so he stayed in the UK for a while. You know how the flights go. All you need to do is look it up. You don't even go near the UK, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> the flight doesn't even go that way and people, f they feed into it. He'll be like, I'm so sick. I was, I was like naked in my room all night because I was so hot. Um, he was always in long sleeves and blankets and hats, beanies, no matter what time of the year it was. He'd say he was outside sleeping on benches because he couldn't sleep. He needs to think. He never left the house. He'd write this shit while he's laying in bed playing video games. You know, he would just lie. He, that's all he does is lie. He lies his ass off because he wants attention from people. And now he has done the ultimate betrayal and gone to the people who have harassed me and hounded me for the last six plus years, who I almost killed myself over. And he's joined their ranks along with her, laughing for and, and reading it for the lulls, which is what they've said, um, just for attention. He's betrayed his own flesh and blood and made me out to be more of a monster than they already thought I was just for attention. So no, he is no son of mine and no matter what he could have ever done in his life, that is the very worst and that will never be forgiven. I know she watches my YouTube because she stalks everything I do. He has told me she watches my videos. Like, I don't know why she does, but she does. And um, I know they would have known that we got into a car crash. And uh, has he written or reached out to me? Mom, are you okay? I, I don't want to talk to you, but just checking that you're okay. Anything like that? No, not at all. But she had the audacity on her Instagram to go and post about my mom saying, oh, here's a Buddha in memory of Kim Sparks. Uh, bitch, you don't know my mom. You have no right to write about my mom in memory of her. She's not fucking dead. And I know Dorian doesn't care about her at all. He doesn't care about anybody but himself. He might pretend he cares about you because you fuck him, but he doesn't care about you. He uses people. I've known him his entire life. I gave birth to him. He didn't even care about his grandpa when his grandpa died until he learned that he could get sympathy and attention. Then suddenly, oh, I was so sad. No, you weren't. You played video games. You didn't cry once. You didn't even care at the funeral. You were bored, you know? You've never once asked about your grandma, wanted to see her, wanted to talk to her. You roll your eyes whenever I'd said, grandma's on the phone, do you wanna talk? I guess. He never cared. So I don't know what lies he's telling her. Or, I miss my grandma, I really wanna see her for attention because I know he doesn't give a fuck about her. So yeah, that pissed me off so much to see that dirty bitch writing about my mom as if she has any fucking right. She doesn't have a right. So um, moving on, um, there's a lot more to that story, but again, uh, Patreon. I'm not gonna waste my video time on that. Also, since we've been here, like I just mentioned, we got into a bad car crash. This car crash put so much into perspective for me as well. Um, I miss him every day when he's at work, even more than I did before. Um, we could have lost each other. We, we got so lucky with this wreck. Like I still have so much pain in my chest. I know obviously my rib is still broken, but um, my face is fine. My eyes are fine. My glasses didn't get broken. I mean, I could have broken my fucking leg. I could have lost a leg. I could have lost my life. Like it could have gone so many ways. Driving down the highway, the other car was going at least 45, 50, I would say, full speed. And 
we were turning and they ran right into us, right on my side. And we, I shouldn't even be here talking to you guys right now. And believe me, I realize that and I know that I've had the biggest life scare, biggest scare of my life just a few weeks ago. And it just made me feel so grateful and thankful for what I do have and my new life here, my new family. And it's just, I don't know. I just, I just feel like a different person and I'm in, I'm in a different place and everything's different. And so much has changed for me this year. It's almost unreal. It's like a dream. Like I'm scared I'm going to wake up and I'm going to be back in New Zealand and miserable. and I'm just going to roll over and cry, you know, like things like this just don't happen, especially not to someone like me. And, um, it's just been, it's been a trip. That's for sure. It's been, it's been a definite trip and there's been so much that's just happened and happening and the support that Josh and I have, that's also kind of blown my mind. Like people that send me stuff, they're like, Oh, I'll throw in a little something for Josh too. Um, when I got sent stuff before people sometimes sent stuff for Logan, but not really like they left him out more than they included him. And we definitely didn't get the same kind of support, you know, like on YouTube or in videos that me and Josh get. Like, I don't know if it's if it's all because of the age or if there was just something about him people didn't like or something about us together. We got some support, but it was maybe 5% of what me and Josh get. If you were somebody that supports me and Josh, but that did not support me and Logan, can you please tell me why? Uh, I'm not trying to be weird or ask for insults i don't want anything rude so just kind of watch how you say it because if it's too rude i won't approve it and i'll probably block you so just be be considerate but i'm just genuinely curious uh if i posted about logan or posted videos or outings with logan tattoos with logan things with logan i never got the same kind of comments or respect or oh my god you guys are so great together that I do now and I just wonder why. What was it that you guys saw that I did not see or that I did not know? I guess that's my question. I've been meaning to ask and I'm really curious. So if you could please fill me in, I'd really appreciate it. Um, I guess that's about it. Christmas hasn't come yet, so I can't talk about that, but uh, I think for New Year's, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to my room right now and I'm gonna call um, liquor stores and see if they have tequila rose because he's never had tequila rose and I would love to just sit around put some music on drink some tequila rose with him and just have a great night bring in the new year with my new love and um, it's gonna be amazing because Logan also didn't you know celebrate New Year's he didn't think anything was all that great about it and uh, he didn't see the the premise of you know, a new year, a new beginning, maybe. And um, I remember making a video, a couple of videos. Let's get drunk on New Year's. Let's do live stream or, or make a recording together. And I'm just sitting here drinking, like yeah, yeah. And then he'd get up and like leave me by myself, and I'm like getting drunk on camera by myself on New Year's. So that kind of sucked. I definitely won't be going through that this year. I know that for sure. Even if I am drunk by myself, because I get drunk so fast. Josh will not leave my side. I know that. And we'll probably record it um, because he's he's cool with that. Um, but uh, until then, you guys take care. I hope your last year has been interesting at the very least. And if anything, I hope that the new year has some good stuff in store and you get everything you hoped for, dreamed for, everything you wanted. I hope that um, whatever issues you have might work out and new beginnings are great for anybody. If you're in a situation like I was, you know, maybe it would do you some good to just bite the bullet and do what's best for you and just let go of the past and just think about yourself, put yourself first and just take that risk. Um, it might not work out, but then again, it might. And if you're unhappy in your current situation, well, it can only get worse, right? I mean, Sorry, it can only get better, not worse. Get worse if you stay. It can only get better if you try to leave and improve it. So, uh, chin up, be brave, move along, and do what you need to do, do what you gotta do to make your life better. 
I'm living proof that you can, at any age, even throw your life away and just try and hope for something better and good things can happen. And uh, I wish the best to all of you, minus Locale Kiwi Farms, you know, um, the rest of you, I wish everything good for you. And thank you so much for being here. New or old subscribers, it doesn't matter. Thank you so much for listening, being here, supporting me through all this all that, all everything. And I love you guys. And I will see you on the other side.